come. When the doctor comes, he checks you against these things. Am I right on that? There are others that will require you going to the hospital. You have all kinds of advanced tests to ascertain the health of these systems. When a doctor says you are healthy, what he's saying is that you largely have been examined across these systems and you've, your body has been found to be functioning well or within the range that they define as healthy. Am I right on that? Now you understand Romans 1.20 that the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen and being understood by the things which are made. Please look up. I hope you know that no man assisted God in the building of man. It was exclusively a product of his intelligence. That means anything that wants to become an organism must subscribe to the same law he used to build the body. No wonder the church is called the body of Christ. Are we together now? Now, I want you to think with me for a moment that all the truths that we know or should know are responsible for making the various spiritual systems that make up our lives work. For instance, understanding the laws of prosperity and the economic system of the kingdom. You can liken it to any of these nine systems. You can be healthy and strong. You can be a missionary with character, love God, and yet that part of your life fails and it can cripple your life and push you to the corridors of compromise. Are we together now? Yes. So in contending for the victorious life, it is very, very important that we make reference to the human body and see how God meticulously worked out systems that the skeletal system alone has about 206 bones, the skeletal structure that make an adult. If God went that far, now do you notice something from this description that all the systems, although they are powerful, they do not all carry equal value. Is that true? Some systems and organs are more delicate than others. That means in order of priority, the doctor or the consultant will pay attention to seeing to the health of a particular organ even before the other. I'm aware that there are doctors who may have a patient that requires multiple treatment and professionally they have been taught to focus on the vital organs that keep the person alive sometimes they may have to dress the person he will go and heal for months then return back am i right on that to carry out the other procedures this is listen biology should help us understand the ways of god show me a man who has promoted his digestive system alone and is alive and strong Show me a man who has promoted his respiratory system alone and downplayed digestion and downplayed his neurological system. But why do we now do this in the body of Christ? Why do we now do this spiritually? I choose prosperity alone. Anything that has to do with prayer, I'm not interested. Or I am a prayer man, I'm a deliverance man. Anything that has to do with impartation of wisdom is unnecessary. That deception I'm announcing to you, is it comes from the pit of hell. And it is the reason why there is no wholesome victory in the life of believers. Hallelujah. So many of us right now are likened to patients who can be healthy and yet there's something that is wrong and God desires to bring wholesome victory wholesome victory in our lives wholesome victory in our lives that you can be like someone who is so healthy and vibrant while we were in the United Kingdom having the conference one of the testifiers a dear woman and when she stood to testify she said she was 65 years and when I looked at that woman if you were told she were 35 probably she's even following now 65 years alive agile I've seen people who you have a, a daddy that your new who comes here now I think this year he'll be 86 and yet he comes strong moving by himself only once or so or never gone to a hospital and his wife who is 10 years younger 75 when I go for programs in the East they show up together healthy and alive yet there's another person 31 and you have to be told that this person is not that old I'm not being sarcastic 
I'm just saying, whether you look young or look old, it's not God's fault. It's something you allow to happen to you. Is that true? Right now, there is a heightened awareness. The wellness industry is programming, you know, and pushing organic living. There are many of you, that's your business line. You can tell us how to be healthy, how to be strong. That is the same thing I'm doing. What you are doing biologically now is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm saying that there is a problem. Who knew before that there are certain foods that when you eat could accelerate your death rate? Am I right on that? Spiritually, there are certain revelations that if you receive or don't live alone, they will fast track your defeat. It is true. There are things about God. There are things about Satan. There are things about life that must come under divine scrutiny so that there be an editing. But I love the person who taught me. That's not the issue. Even if it was Joshua Selman who taught you, let God be true and let every man a liar be a liar. Our loyalty to things that are maybe lesser truths or truths that are isolated or you know information that is not even truth we hold on to it this is all i've known and yet god is asking you tonight do you desire your tomorrow greater than your today then you must be willing to relinquish certain things when i receive advices from you know medical people and i i have so many of them around my life they can advise and say listen take water do this do that do that that's the advice. And sometimes, how many of you know that you can see something you used to like or you still like? And painfully so, you remember the instruction that came from the consultant and you are there salivating, hoping for a chance. And you are saying, I mean, why did I meet this doctor to advise me? I would have remained. But you have a choice. You can eat it and die. Or you can trust God for grace and leave it and then you leave. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I'm pointing something powerful for you tonight that I'm hoping you understand. Apostle, I saw my father love the Lord. He served the Lord with all his heart. But we had to go and eat in the house of certain neighbors. What kind of God is that? Uh, 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 let me answer you now. That is not a reflection of what God can do. It is a reflection of the human body again. And the inability to contend for wholesome health. Are we together now? That every time we allow a dimension of our body to not move forward, uh, the template we give the world can misrepresent God. So, if you have to learn God only from the lens of that missionary, what kind of God is this that has a missionary loving him with all his heart, serving him with all his heart, and yet the school fees of the children cannot be paid every time they are sending them back home, and then they come and they are praying, Oh God, will you not answer us? And yet there is an unbeliever giving scholarships to people under the same heaven. What kind of a God is that? It is not a description of God. It is a description of your state. Hmm. Hallelujah. So for instance, there are believers who are always praying, always praying, always, you know, casting out, binding something. And I'm not, a, I minister deliverance here, you see. But that's all they know. They will never sit down to learn the ways of God. And the devil has seen that there is a big gap. There are other aspects of their Christian life that has not been brought together. And so he keeps manipulating them and demons keep playing games around their destiny. And for a long time, after 10 years, they are still doing the same thing and not moving forward. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom. Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, shalom, you're welcome in this place. Watch this. How many of you have seen the athletes that win? Or footballers that play watch people who pack a stadium full to watch 22 players in a field there's none of those players 
that will be able to go to that field and command your attention if they are not healthy. Are we together? Now, some of them with, with advancement in technology now have opened us up to their training routine. What makes them the champions that we celebrate? And you can see, they will show you their dieting. They will show you their workout structure. Are we right on that? And that that is what produced that basketballer or that footballer. Because of the results they have commanded, we have now even gone into their private life to probe. Do you know that what they are doing is the scripture that says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and now say, how are you doing this? That when men say there is a casting down, yours is a lifting up and you tell them there is a system responsible for the empowerment of the saints. Do you know about it? And they say, I was never taught. Now you don't condemn them. You say, come, let me show you. And in one year, two years, like a patient who was sick, you have corrected that part of them. Now he becomes a pastor with integrity, but in addition to that, he's empowered economically to send his children to school. Or you find one who is doing well financially, but the knowledge of God is zero, character zero, and you tell him, listen, there is an aspect of the kingdom life you may be missing. Can I show you? And the person says, I thought money was everything. I was mentored to believe once you have money, whether you have character or not, it doesn't matter. And you tell him, no, there is a system in the kingdom. The absence of character, even with money, will bring a deficiency to your life. Can I show you? Now you open that person up. Now he becomes a prosperous person having character. Or a preacher who is very administrative and loves God. He can put things in place. But the principles of building people methodically to make people who are mighty and of stature is not there. And you bring him like Aquila and Priscilla and expound to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. Now he does not just become a church administrator. He becomes a teaching priest indeed. Or one who is a sound teacher, but the messages are full of propositions without the engracing to produce results. God can heal, no healing. God can lift, no lifting. God can bless, no blessing. You are blessed in Jesus' name, amen, no results. And you can bring the person and say, sir, there is a system of empowerment in this kingdom that even when you have knowledge, there is another system like the human body. Have you been taught that? Say, no, I was just taught that once I have the word, that's all. He said, no problem. Don't feel bad over the person who taught you. He did his best. But let me show you, there is another system where you tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. Even after three and a half years of mentorship by Jesus himself, you still need a empowerment that man receives that impartation and by next Sunday when he goes there in the name of Jesus be healed and suddenly to his shock something has come upon my pastor he's no longer just that empty teacher what has been added the patient is now better the patient is now recovering as I'm teaching tonight, just imagine a patient in ICU and a doctor, this time not Joshua Selman, Jesus himself is fixing the many systems that are going wrong, that at the end of it, that patient will jump up, healthy digestive system, healthy respiratory system. Are we together? All the nine systems I listed, how could you be a failure under that condition of health? Thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. You believe what I'm sharing? Then another person says there are no demons anywhere. Well, forget about all those demons thing. There's no such thing as that. But you are seeing the classic signature of oppression in all its definition. That the fact that you believe that already is a successful plot of darkness on your mind. And then you can come and say, listen, it is true that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, but there are dynamics to activating that truth. The same truth that brought us deliverance is the same truth that brought us healing. Yet there are believers who are still sick physically, including many preachers. That does not mean if you can still be sick as a preacher, sick as a man of God, what makes you believe you cannot be oppressed? It takes revelation. There is a higher dimension. But until you get there, you must administer all the truths. It is not a doctor's ultimate desire. 
to remove a patient's appendix. Am I right on that? It is not the doctor's ultimate desire to put some metals in a patient. But those things become necessary processes if that's what will be involved to, for the survival of the patient. This is what we do sometimes. So even though in the beginning it was not so, in managing people, we deploy every scriptural mechanism that insists on their health. Are we together? Apostle, I don't know what is happening to me. I don't believe in myself again. I'm depressed. There's this mental health. I want to go and commit suicide. You think that's just because there's no job? That's a spirit. That's a spirit. You know what it means to kill yourself? Where there are people begging for life, they will give up anything for life. Yet another person will go and hang himself on a tree and kill yourself or take drugs. It has to be a spirit. How many people testify and they will tell you a voice was telling me, kill yourself and die. The devil stopped them from hearing the Holy Ghost. Yet without training, they can hear a demon spirit. Are we together? The assignment of that is deliverance. That when you come by the word, that spirit, in the name of Jesus, we command that devil to leave. And when that devil leaves, then we can now start mentoring and building the person now. Are we together? Closing that door by giving you a renewed spiritual orientation. See who you are in Christ and then to help you to stand. Imagine if all the doctors now said, once you are a Christian, you are not admitted in the hospital because Christ has died for your sins. You know how many of us will be left? There are 2.6 billion Christians on earth now. About a billion of them are Roman Catholics according to statistics. And then, you know, all other sects spread the remaining that is left. 2.6 billion people, thanks to the ministry of doctors. So when you read the Bible, you will see that none shall say in Zion, I am sick. Yet go to, um, why do we have a medical stand? full of very excellent and exceptional doctors by the way and paramedics and medics why do we have such a stand when we believe in the power of god because of an expression of god's love and the insistence to attend to everyone at every level now there is a level you can attain unto in christ through growth and transformation are we together now yes there is such a level that you can stand and literally be immune you would have conquered the realm of defeat but it does not just happen by impartation man shall not live by bread alone but by every word is is a progression of growth that depends on your level of alignment the quality of the truth you are receiving and the longevity of your stay in his presence but while that happens there are medical doctors that midwife people and i'm telling you that we are alive today thanks to medical doctors Imagine the women who confess scripture and said in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not have CS, I will have a normal delivery. But eventually the doctor said, you need to go through CS. Imagine if they refused and said, I will not do CS. They would have died for nothing. And some of you will not be here. Are we together? Are you, are you getting what I'm teaching you today? The human body is alive and victorious simply because of this so if i jump this jump alone can you tell me how many systems were healthy to have made this happen if my skeletal system alone was faulty i would not be able to jump as little as this is i've been holding the mic for a while now did you know that there are people their their neurological system is so broken they cannot even handle anything Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. My call for you is what part of the kingdom truth have you ignored? And look at the effect. I'm giving you a medical parallel so that you will see. Could it be that something you ignored is why poverty seems to be ravaging your family? I don't believe the prophetic. Prophets and apostles are all liars and fake. No, 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 no. There might be issues in the body of Christ with the prophetic and the apostolic ministry but don't throw the baby under bad water you will be going through issues in life that only the prophetic can solve and because you have made up your mind that that system will not work for you you will be limited for years over something that can be corrected in just five minutes 
Imagine if Saul continued to roam around to say he was going to look for the donkey by himself. He probably would have died a beast in the, in the wilderness, would have eaten him for nothing. And he said, let's stop wasting this time. There is a man, a seer, whose word does not fall to the ground. As soon as he met Samuel, Samuel showed him the value of the prophetic. He said, go up, leave the issue that brought you here. I will tell you what is in your heart. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? And another chapter of his destiny opened. Imagine Samaria without Elisha. Imagine Jesus without John. Are we learning now? So, congratulations for all you have learned. And thank God for we men of God who continue to do our best. And for as long as God grants us grace, we'll continue to do our best to teach that which we know. But I beseech you by the message of God, that when you have an opportunity to contend for higher superior provable truths that you do not harden your heart doing yourself a disservice but that your heart be open the goal is not to say so 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 and so did not teach me well no that's not the idea but that we must be humble watch this now if i am a consultant say a bone a bone specialist that's my area of specialty. With the whole description I've given you now, imagine someone who comes to meet me and says, um, Dr. So-and-so, I have a very serious problem with my kidneys. I have a problem, you know, with the entire excretory system. And I said, well, that's unnecessary. The most important thing is make sure once your skeletal system is fine, you are going to be all right. Do you think that patient is going to leave? No. So for me to admit that my area of professionalism, I'm not a consultant in everything. I'm a consultant, I'm a, okay, I'm a bone specialist. Now you tell the person, well, when it has to do with this, there are people who are graced and given that, that understanding here. I can only attend to you and recommend. And this has been my call, especially to we men and women of God. Let us not destroy God's people because of pride. We do not know everything. Stay in your area of excellence and call. Give your very best. But be open and let God's people find holistic truth and development. This is not just to allow people to be careless and roam around from pillar to post, but we must be honest. I know it's an uncomfortable truth, but we must get to a point where we admit that we do not know everything. There's, there's not, there, it does not reduce you. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many people who would have been healed today if only they were given a chance to see the value of healing. And sometimes, the way we act as men of God is the area we do not have grace for we trivialize. We say it's not necessary. No, it's... It, see, do you know after COVID... There are many pastors here and they will bear me witness. Do you know that after COVID, many pastors went under pressure because members were incapacitated financially till now. There are pastors literally, I have the privilege of speaking with so many people and they say, Apostle, I'm, it's almost as if we're in trouble because members are saying we were downsized, we don't have jobs, man of God. You told us that God is able to help. Can the church give us scholarship? And the, and the woman has five children. 100,000 for one person. But when the word of God came to empower them economically, you told them, don't worry. The most important thing is love the Lord. And we misquote scriptures that say, don't worry about this. Take no thought of what to eat without understanding what the scriptures were saying. By the privilege of God's grace and not to brag, I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. I'm involved in the life of many families and many children. Believe me. And I know how much is committed and invested literally daily and weekly to keep many families and many people alive and strong. And, so, and for most of these families, they are Christians. And you will be asking, okay, what was the system of mentorship they were exposed to? And why all these gaps? There are many young people now getting into fraud, internet fraud and the rest. And most of them are church people. And we're asking questions. They are praying in tongues. But while they are praying in tongues, they are about to cheat somebody in the night. Are we together now? 
Now listen carefully. And we may say it does not matter until the day the church starts grooming armed robbers. There are robbers that kidnap people and catch people and quote scriptures and even laugh. They are not ignorant people. It's just that there are systems we are ignoring in the body of Christ and it's beginning to tell now. Artificial intelligence is taking over the place of employment. In the, many people are not prepared for the world that is coming in the next five to ten years. Listen to what I'm telling you. Many believers will say it doesn't matter. I have God. God is all like, you are right. But do you know the dynamics of allowing the power of God to work in your life? There is a generation that will be exposed to the world that they do not know anything about. And I'm not talking of the next 20 years. The next 5 to 10 years, there will be casualties in the body of Christ if we do not restore wholesome knowledge that produces wholesome victories. So we're going to have a bunch of people who will truly, because you see the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, findeth. There are people, the only thing they are seeking is prosperity. They are seeking the loss of the kingdom by fire, by force. And through diligence, they will find it. The trouble is, if the only thing they find is prosperity, when a man prospers and he does not have character, he becomes a weapon of mass destruction to himself and to society. Then there will be a group of frustrated people who love the Lord, character, loving Jesus with all their hearts. And yet you find out that nothing will work in their lives. And in pain they will say, God, why did you do this to me? Other people were bribing, other people were doing all of that and I avoided this because of my love for you. We've been shouting for a very long time. The wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. We've been saying these things since I was growing up. Till now, the wealthy people are getting wealthier and the church is suffering. We are suffering. We are getting into trouble. We are in debt. We are in all kinds of things. And those people sometimes watch with shock what we are saying. Because those things are true, but those statements are incomplete. The dynamics of the workings of those strategies we have not learned. Are we together? How about power? Sometimes we talk against herbalists and all of that. I would never promote evil and, you know, demonic things. But I'm saying that we, we say don't go to herbalists, don't go to the devil, don't do all of these things. Okay, I refuse to go to the devil and I've come to you, Joshua Selman. The truth is that I need you to help me. Things are not working in my life. And I say, well, things are not working just because you are not serious. And the person says, I'm a diligent person. What do you mean I'm not serious? As elaborators, what I'm saying is, this is speaking to the pain of many of you seated looking at me right now. There are many of you who already have accumulated frustration. You are just getting almost to a, a breaking point where it's as if, look at our young people and their disdain for church. There's not much of that happening because in Africa we still have, you know, our, you know, our moral fabric is still, is still intact to an extent. But you go across the world and you see empty churches that you find a church with 100 people and they're celebrating. They call that a crowd. And yet, a secular person or someone somewhere who is about to do something godless and from morning till night, people pack up theaters and pack up everything, celebrate, and we think it does not matter. Wait until a godless society takes over the helm of government. Then you will see what happens. Preachers are getting discouraged because even they themselves are not understanding why this thing is not working again. After preaching and writing books for many years, I cannot understand why this is working again. I thought the key was confession. I have confessed the word sincerely. I have done it with all my heart. What else is left? Oh, there is a lot that is left. I have walked in holiness and righteousness, you will say, loving the Lord sincerely with all my heart. What else is left? There is still a lot that is left. I've been diligent and hardworking. I sleep late in the night. I wake up early in the morning. I'm, I'm, I've given myself to trainings and, and the rest. What else is left? There is still a lot more that is left. My assignment tonight is to provoke you, to let you know that that victorious life in Christ is your destiny but like the human body ladies and gentlemen 
there is a call to explore the other dimensions that have not yet been added to produce wholesome victory. Otherwise, we are going to be quoting scripture. Thanks be to God who causes us to triumph and we will watch our loved ones sadly continue to die in ill health because we are not willing to explore the vast riches. What are the keys that control the healing anointing? What are the keys that control prosperity and wealth? What are the keys that control influence? What are the keys that control longevity? What are the keys that control excellence? What are the keys? We need to find these keys. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I submit to you, there is no single man that has all the keys by himself. God himself will not even allow that. You can have all the keys work in your life and that by gleaning to the body, the larger body, through humility, to receive other keys that may not be in your personal experience with God. Are we together? Open your Bible and read and you will find what is written there. And you will see what is happening in your life versus what the Bible says should happen. It says your children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Yet you love the Lord with all your heart and you have trained five children. Not one of them is walking. Not one of them is risen. All born again, spirit filled. And every morning you hear the sound of those children. They wake you up with their prayers. You, they, you sleep while they are praying. And yet you are saying, what kind of a God is this? That after five years, he cannot give, even if it's one of my child a job. I am telling you, the problem is not God. There is something about the system he designed that we do not understand. Are we together? Yes. I'm born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. But people don't like coming around me. I don't even have friends. What kind of thing is this? It must be demonic. Okay, we agree that there are spirits there. Okay, you come for miracle service and these spirits are casted. Yet, after five months, you still don't have any friend. What is wrong? Another spirit. You may be having a journey forever that will cause you pain. The real key is to now go back. Now that that deliverance has happened, what are the laws that govern relationships? He that wants friends must show himself friendly. You learn people's skills. You learn the law of honor. You see, when you learn these other dimensions, you find out in one week, you can have great friends and that includes your destiny helpers coming along. Are we together? I'm a man of God, but why is it that I'm not succeeding in ministry? I will tell you, among many other reasons, it can be that you are not providing the kind of results, the kind of value, even though spiritual, that is needed and useful. Can people come to you? Can they come and learn God from you and be sure they will not be disappointed? Can they come and you pray for them and they are sure that they will return with testimonies? Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. Psychologists teach us that one of the indices, the major index that measures our concept of happiness is progress. I hope you know that. That the degree to which you perceive you are making progress, it would translate to joy in your heart. And I can tell you it is true. Even as a man of God, it is true. I'll be wicked to just downplay. I come here every week, I'm happy. There are so many people inside, outside, everybody. I am happy God sent me, but I am happy you are coming because it is proof that the value is changing you. It is proof that something is changing in your life. Are we together now? If I can be happy as a man of God that I'm making progress, why will not I not want the people that God brings around me to also make progress? They may not be preachers, but what is wrong in you having your own house? After 20 years, what is wrong in you at least having a car? It's not all about cars, but must you trek for the rest of your life? Is that the will of God? Say no. no. I can't be the will of God. And you know, sometimes we downplay these things and say it does not matter. And a gentleman was trekking since he was in, in college. And now after 30 years, he's holding four children and his wife. He's still trekking, praying in tongues for 20 years, quoting scripture for 20 years. Something is not working. It's not just about money. I'm just using this to show you that when a system is faulty in your life, there is the, the deficiency becomes clear and your children can come and inherit that deficiency. 
I vowed and I told myself that everything I had to suffer in my life, anybody that comes from me, physical, spiritual children, will never go through that again. This is why you see me laboring to tell you this. It is from a heart of love. As for me, I believe the things I'm teaching. And I'm honored, I thank God that I have my results to show. So if I do not love you, I will not care. I will just say, let's come and pray and go. If you are fortunate to have a testimony, may God bless you. No, not here. Not here. I will insist in love. If it's to cry, we will cry together. If it's to pray, we will pray together. If it's to be diligent, we will be diligent together. Until your life becomes a praise to the nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many people who have downplayed prayer. They are hard working, but they do not pray because they do not know that in the place of fellowship, there is an advantage that comes upon your life. And so when you talk about prayer, they say, don't mind all these poor people. They are just praying because they are poor and broke. No, you may be making a mistake. And so most of them say the only demon is, you know, and they make all kinds of statements that should not be. Eventually, the person becomes a billionaire and one strike from hell and all that money vanishes. Back to my example on the human body. I mentioned nine systems that I want you to pay attention to because I truly believe, and you are to, if you are to be honest with yourself, it's possible that one or more systems may be found wanting even if it has not gone to a point it has not packed up maybe it's declining you know how doctors can warn people and say look i checked your sugar level it's not yet so bad but be careful because you are you are having is going down or you, you understand that that's what god is doing to some of us the trouble has not yet manifested but it's on its way if you do not change Write this down. The believer's victory, please write this down. The believer's victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom. The believer's victory will only be made manifest. Please underline the word manifest. The believer's victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom. What are the systems of the kingdom? Like the various parts of the human body. There is the prayer system. There is the speaking of the word, you know. There's the place for mental transformation. There's the place for character and moral excellence. There's the place for diligence. I like to use the word diligence instead of hard work. There's the place for relationships. There's the place for the anointing. There is the place for patience. There's the place for mentorship. These are the various systems that are responsible. Maybe I should run through a few of them again. There's the prayer system designed to help men make contact with God. I have taught you, listen to my teachings on prayer, the assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. How about the place of the word? Confessing the word, studying the word, make reference to my teaching, equipping the saints. I preach it in Zaria. It's on our global page. Mental transformation. There are many believers who do not subscribe for mental transformation. They love God, they pray, they fast, but their understanding is so barren and unfruitful. It cannot purchase anything notable because of a level of mental bankruptcy. And I'm not just talking from an academic standpoint. Enlightenment, understanding how life works. The Bible says to be wise as a serpent and to be gentle as doves. He said, I send you as sheep among wolves. So be wise as a serpent. Why would God recommend a serpent when it has to do with having the wisdom of living in the cosmos? Mental transformation. Then there is a place of character. Then there is a place of diligence. There are people who pray and fast 
and study scripture rightly so but they never study the materials that lead to their excelling in their field of endeavor the bible gives you a holistic viewpoint of life but as far as becoming excellent and gaining mastery is concerned you have to be able to lay hold the area where god has called you into if you're a career person you must be excellent you're a medical person be excellent listen there are two people who the bible commended their prayer lives in the bible I, I don't want to take the time to teach on that, but just to teach you a very powerful lesson. One of them is Elijah. Elijah was even referred to in the book of James as a template to help us pray. But another person was Daniel. The difference between the two is Daniel did not just pray alone. Daniel was commended not just for his prayer life. Daniel was commended for the spirit of excellence and intelligence. And notice that of two of them, when we remember the one who had a systemic impact, we remember Daniel. They both prayed, but in addition, Daniel was intelligent. He was flawless. At least we know Elijah was an angry man. Because there are certain things about administration and leadership. If he learned, it would have added to his prayer life and made him a better presentation of God's ambassador. And this was what Daniel, I, Daniel, understood by books. You never see I, Elijah, in addition to this. He called down fire. Yes, I agree. He judged the prophets of Baal, but he ran away. He ran away. From, you remember when he ran away? You never see Daniel running away because he was preserved by wisdom. Even in a strange and a foreign land, there were other things he had that stabilized him. His prayer was exceptional. He dealt with the spirits of the Medes and the Persians. But my goodness, they sought for an occasion to mock God and they did not find any. He was flawless. Unbelievers testified that he had the spirit of the gods there. Can they say that about you in office? Or the only thing they'll say is that you pray and you fast. You are the, you are the poorest in terms of your job. You are, you, and you are saying, apostle, you have to pray for me. I want to become the CEO. I love you, but I love the company too. Should it go down just because? Do you get what I'm teaching you now? Listen, I thank God. I study and I pray. But let me tell you sincerely, and I will not lie to you, that there, there is a dimension of understanding that only books will give you. You have to buy the truth and sit down. Most people want a global ministry. They want a global life. And all they have been taught that is responsible for global influence is impartation. You see that? Impartation is a system in the kingdom. But the value of impartation is that it comes upon a mind that has been transformed. Transformed through knowledge. Transformed through discipline. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching